Previously on Blackjack Reacts to Death Battle. And now, the thrilling conclusion. <laughs> so, somebody forgot to include Kefka in this? Fine! I'll just have to bring him myself! <laughs> yeah, Sarah, I brought him here. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Yeah, he only wishes he was that ripped. <laughs> anyway, who am I rooting for? Neither. I'm just hoping for some good old fashioned <laughs> And yes, I know, I look more like Cesar Romero as the Joker, don't I? I don't care. <laughs> So, let's see how that silver-haired pretty boy fares. Oh, either of them, I don't care. This will be titillating. <laughs> Great philosopher Plato once said, the measure of a man is what he does with power. You've got that right! Where is the measure of a man? Sephiroth, the fearsome one-winged angel of final fantasy. And Virgil. And Cap Capalot, so the gallons of trash! He's whiz and I'm boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Ah, there we go. Through the millennia, legends were passed of a source of unlimited energy, the Promised Land. Unfortunately, all hope of finding this sacred ground had been lost until the Shinra Electric Power Company excavated the remains of a being believed to come from the very land they sought. They called this weird naked purple lady Genova and thought that if they could bring her back to life... By the way, does anyone ever... Land, but has anyone ever noticed in the original game... When it does its original close-up of Genova, read her helmet. It has copyright information. Frieza! Shinra decided they would simply create their own. After many experiments infusing Genova's cells with those of a human, they finally found their savior. His name was Sephiroth. <laughs> I will say this, he has banging theme music. Look at how majestic that mane is. According to Final Fantasy IV, Sephiroth has to use an entire bottle of... Voiced by the bass singer of Insic, no really. Am I the only one who likes, uh, like, Lance Bass better than, uh, George Newbern? I, I, he, he did a better job. <laughs> at least as far as Kingdom Hearts goes, because we didn't really hear him much at any... Athena, yes, I know, you love your stick. You want to quiet it down for right now, Athena? This is what I mean. I don't get any respect around here. It's like the Gestalian Empire all over again. Only this time, I don't have anybody to throw off a floating continent. Oh, 27, isn't that novel? Jeez, we haven't seen any other 27-year-old destroyers of worlds around here, have we? <laughs> that boy makes me look like an absolute optimist. For research. But Shinra wasn't interested in Sephiroth for his hair. Instead, he was in his... Well, not just his hair. Soldier program. Wait, wait. 
This electric company has their own private military? I'd hate to miss Shouldn't you? Those guys, especially if they sent Seth after me. I mean, look at the ridiculously long sword he keeps with. That's his Masamune. This seven oh, big, big deal. That Fretz kid has the same sword. And, and he's like 12. Pain. But instead of wielding something long with two hands like those, Sephiroth only needs one. Even that speaks nothing of his effectiveness as a warrior. Yeah, you know when people spread legends of someone, they usually make him out to be even better than he really is? It's the total opposite with Sephiroth. With his superhuman speed, strength, and durability, Sephiroth was instrumental in Got the Trinity victory in the Wutai War, conquering the last free nation on the planet. He returned home a legend. But all these poor and busy feelings of victory didn't last long. All the mission was out of just a moment. Athena! Ow! No! I'm not playing. <laughs> Truly, there are more destructive forces than me in this house. <laughs> Sephiroth found a bunch of books on the Genova Project. That's when he discovered he was a secret science project the whole time. The truth crushed Sephiroth and drove him mad. In a rage, he annihilated Nibelheim, but was stopped by a mercenary named Cloud. Oh, no big deal. So you're an alien. Sword ...and fell to his death. Oh, well... Pussy! Which is what I would have said if Sephiroth hadn't dropped into a hole in the ground that led him to the giant Windows screensaver called the Lifestream. The Lifestream is a very river of energy which basically maintains life across the planet. Normally, merging with the Lifestream is the equivalent of entering the afterlife, but not for Sephiroth. And this is where things get weird, so buckle up. Still conscious, Sephiroth's essence floated through the Lifestream for years until he absorbed enough energy to rebuild his body. With the energy of the life stream, he can control other beings with Genova cells. Including the corpse of Genova, who he manipulated like a puppet and disguised as himself. Oh, what the hell? That's his mom? Who would do that to their old mom? I mean, I know she's a genocidal alien monster, but come on! Probably not. Right there, right there. Okay. Let's go back a second. I want to show you. Genova, who he manipulated like a puppet and disguised as himself. Oh, what the hell? That's his mom. Mm, oh, I that? don't I know. I think they I mean, were both. I know she's a genocidal alien monster, but <laughs> come on. Probably makes a good breakfast. There. See, uh, Genova, the All Rights Reserve 1996, I think it says, Square Company Limited. But Sephiroth's descent into the life stream offered him even more. It transformed him from a mere super soldier into the most dangerous being on the planet. He's <laughs> the man of Pearl Man hundreds of feet skyward, move at supersonic speeds, and withstand brutal stab wounds Wait, through the organs. He's an illusion of powers that can trick people by creating an entirely fake scenario. He can lift people with his mind, including himself, and then he can just fly. So it works, right? Oh, I can do that. Sephiroth can cast magic thanks to his on-hand material. Materia is crystallized life energy which grants different powers according to the type of material used. <laughs> attack with fire, lightning, ice, and earth based. He can block attacks with barrier and reflect, and heal himself with cure and regen. And ever since jumping into the life stream, he's had unlimited access to his magical powers. With his new So Zach basically ability, fucked over the entire world. What else is new? Drying up the planet. At least I did it on purpose. Doesn't sound so scary. Does that mean he's an environmentalist, or...? But to do this, he decided to use black materia to summon a giant meteor to destroy the planet and absorb all of its life energy for himself. So, like, an opposite environmentalist. A planet vampire. I mean, we're talking about a guy who kicked a dude through solid concrete, murdered the crap out of a 30-foot serpent with a spike in the face, and tanked a dragon's flamethrower attack without even getting a teensy bit hurt. A particularly impressive feat, considering this attack was capable of one-shotting fellow soldier Zach Fair. Uh, Wiz, you may need to up your prescription. Does that's definitely cloud. that mean that his shampoo is fireproof? Memories there. It was really Zach. 
However, it was Cloud who impaled Sephiroth three life string with the Buster Soul. And holy God, is it huge! It's like two feet wide! I think a stab from that thing would just cut him in half! <laughs> and in his rematch with Cloud, he blocked an attack strong enough to crater the metal around him. Considering the diameter of the crater, the surface area of Sephiroth's feet, and assuming the most likely steel composition, I estimate this attack to equal nearly 1,600 tons of force. Sephiroth didn't use that wicked sword to stab and lift wannabe heroes by their ribcage. Got so killed, but then got better. Shoot energy beams that can shred these huge Mako cannons. And from the live stream, Sephi figured out he could create new bodies or even take on other forms. These forms greatly <laughs> resemble certain creatures found in Christian and Jewish mythology. He certainly looks the part when he goes into his ultimate form. Regardless, Sephiroth does possess a single black wing, a blatant symbol of his fall from grace. I've got two mismatched wings. Does everything it can to not be oh no, he's like summoning so algebra. Yeah, but he can do it more than if one. Sam is that powerful? How does anyone ever beat him? Don't get the wrong idea here. There's a lot of debate over how Supernova actually works. But it's an illusion, come on. But Sephiroth isn't creating the explosion himself. Rather, he's transporting his foes to a specific point in time within an alternate dimension. Careful, Wiz. Don't sell him short. What? Just look at it. When he uses the attack, reality literally crumbles away like glass. This is identical to the animation for certain summon creatures. According to the official Crisis Core Complete Guide, summons draw their targets into their own space in order to attack. And this is no different. So, this, games, this is his come on, Blue Falcon moment then. The, the attack is even described as sending destruction even into other dimensions. And if you oh, please, it, anybody can do that. Will, why did he go through so much trouble to get the Black Materia, which literally summons meteors? Fuck with me, Blue. why the supernova doesn't hurt him. He's not really there, just using those illusion powers of his. With all these powers, I can't believe Cloud and friends were able to take him down. He's not invincible, but he's damn powerful. Ever persistent, Sephiroth departed with a final chilling promise. I will never be a memory. Why does he sound so bored? Because he doesn't know how to have fun with his life! Great mutiny transpired in the underworld. The demon warrior Sparta rebelled against his evil master, Mundus. To protect the world, Sparta did his best to seal the connection between Hell and Earth. Oh, but who but wants to protect the world? Got Come on! Or maybe it's it was just fun. a sausage fest in there. Either way, he stuck out of Hell long enough to knock up this chick named Eva. And she Boring! Got a couple of awesome demon slayers. Nice choice. You may remember the younger of the two. No, I do like his style. Oh, yeah. But the eldest and potentially deadliest brother was the one and only Virgil. Virgil and Dante were rivals from birth. Dante was a goofball. Virgil was serious. Dante hated his being a demon, and Virgil loved it. It's that classic. Well, he could have loved it very much if he was that but serious one about it. Day in an act of vengeance against the late Sparta, a group of rogue demons separated the two brothers and killed their mother. Virgil was believed. But in, in reality, front of a jukebox. And set out on his own path to seek his Nello Angelo. Himself. And he's 100% equipped to be a butt-kicking demon slayer just like his pups. As a half-demon, Virgil can jump several times as a oh. moving supersonic speed. It just occurred to me, you know what I didn't get into? They didn't get into Hell's Gate. You know, the whole uh, pray pray jump jump spiky spiky thing. <laughs> because I saw the previews about the characters and they're going to say that Virgil uh, can take being impaled. So Hell's Gate won't matter. But you know what? You know who else took an impalement like that? <gasps> By a super soldier of comparable strength, no less. Seven. Celis, I'm looking in your direction. Oh, why are they sending this slub up against it anyway? He looks so quickly, kind of like that Wolverine guy. He can tough out getting stabbed through the lungs. In oh, right there, right there. Heart, body parts I'm pretty sure most people need. Not if my experiment has anything to say about it. He's 
Say something with I said no. Oh, do tell. Urge to destroy world already in capacity, so ugh, couldn't rise very much more. At all, really. I said not if Virgil's abilities have anything to say about it. Well, sadly, for any human demon or human demon who gets in his way, Virgil also happens to carry some extra deadly weapons on hand. Yes! Including a spiffy katana called Tomato Yamato. Eh, it's said that this sword can cut through anything, even dimensions, and probably tomato. Actually, Yamato is the exact thing Sparta used to seal hell from Earth in the first place. Virgil's sword fighting prowess draws with a sword. Dark Slayer fighting style, which emphasizes teleportation, lightning quick movements, and even quicker slashes straight from the sheet. Now I'll this admit is directly influenced by Iaijutsu, the real life Japanese art of the quick draw. And that I don't know much about how these extra dimensional things work, but I'm pretty sure that you can't do it with a sword. Yeah, the only thing better than fighting with one sword is fighting with eight. With Virgil's ghostly summoned swords, he can turn himself into Maybe Virgil's bread and butter, but if he needs to focus on brute strength, he switches to fail. He can charge up blink of an eye punches and kicks that hit like a cement truck made of lead and KO some of the toughest demons in just a few hits. Mm. Hey, looks like he takes Street Fighter. There's one more trick up Virgil's sleeve. Thanks to his demon blood, he can access a form known as Devil Trigger. And this mode amplifies everything. His strength. Sounds good, sounds good. Dimension Slash, so he'll be able to get out of the uh, extra dimensional summon space. He's taken down dozens of demons in the blink of an eye and escaped an illusion from the Sorcerer Arkham, which makes normal people go crazy. But if anything's gonna show up what a son of Sparta can really do, it's pitting him against his bro. Didn't Beowulf die like a million years ago? About 3,000 years ago, I think. Storms can fill a cubic foot space with as many as 30 raindrops. So, Virgil and Dante must have destroyed 108,000 raindrops in less than a second. If Virgil can swing his sword that fast, I bet he'd make a killing mowing lawns, or chopping meat at the deli, or giving haircuts, or doing that thing where he chops bad guys to pieces so fast they don't even realize they're dead yet. Like when yeah. he lost Beowulf, the monster, not the weapon. And then he punched him so hard he flew. And not the king, up, apparently, either. Size to Virgil, he appears to be as large as an elephant. Given what's available, this seems like our best measure of Virgil's strength. But Bigger there is man. one issue. The Devil May Cry series makes frequent use of slow motion to depict the absurdity of its character, and this could be a similar case. So let's look at another slow mo feat, the rainstorm fight. At one point, the rain freezes in place for about two and a half seconds as Virgil and Dante keep moving, indicating a 14,500% speed increase in real time. Applying the same degree to the Beowulf punch. It's it amazing how this makes me look so much more pale than I actually am. With that in mind, we can apply our previous data to use the maximum height sand ceiling and determine Virgil's striking strength to be nearly 720 million newtons of force. Well, shit! It matches Virgil's incredible toughness, too. We already mentioned his super healing factor, but it's even more overpowered than you think. Virgil once got completely cut in half, but healed so fast that it's impossible to even notice. And his regeneration ability can be worn down. Yeah, Wouldn't at least his clothes show? But it takes a lot to pull off, and Virgil can always just use Yamato to hop through dimensions to get away from us. Sadly, Virgil never got to rule the demon realm like he wanted. Instead, the demon king Mundus permanently transformed Virgil into his puppet, irreversibly manipulating his mind in the process. Well, shit. Sunday, Sunday, uh, exploded him. But one or two losses against someone who's basically goddamn Satan hardly makes him a weakling. Hell and Earth trembles before the power of Virgil. It'll be fun if you like the Prince of Darkness. If my father did it, I should be able to do it too. Oh, I don't know about that. My father's a math major. <laughs> <laughs> Let's end this debate once and for all. But before we get to the bloody slicing and dicing, pick up some blue apron and 
No, I shall not. I shall slay them all. Okay, so, as we discussed, uh, Virgil can take the whole attack. Um, it seems like getting cut in half and regenerating immediately from that is better healing than regenerating from being impaled even with a two-foot sword, which was not animated very well <laughs> at all. <laughs> it's the whole, you know, <clears throat> lack of battle damaged clothing. I keep turning my head that way, but here, I gotta show you the feather thing. I used to have a big pink feather that I would use for this. And, oh, there. I used to have a big pink feather, but I can't find it. <laughs> Uh, so, um, that being able to cut through dimensions to get away from attacks is definitely going to play in Virgil's favor. Oh, you, do you have, uh, some insight to share there? You should. Goodness knows, you've certainly lived here long enough. <laughs> uh, but, uh... By the way, I wanted to let everybody know before I forget, since this is the season finale, and usually the season start up again in February, um, I'm going to be doing some uh, DBX and possibly one minute melee reactions. Jeez, <sighs> I remember this was in one minute melee, and Virgil ended it with something like, this isn't over. And... Uh, that was years ago, and they're not with Screw Attack anymore, so I thought, hey, put this over the headphones, why not? <laughs> it's so disorienting, because I see it on this side. <laughs> anyway, so... I'm actually going to go with Virgil on this one. And no, that's not Sour Grapes. <laughs> it actually isn't. I'm just going to go with Virgil. Um, he seems like he can hit harder than Sephiroth can take. And he can get away from things like Supernova. Okay, you see the... the Inside lighting on this, isn't that cool? <laughs> and I got the fringe down here. It's cut off of an old blanket. <laughs> ah. See, it's the battle we should have been having right now. And even then, I wouldn't necessarily think that Kefka would win. I would go into that thinking, ooh. <laughs> I mean, you know, Kefka could also tank Hell's Gate. Uh, Sephiroth could probably, oh, uh, goodness golly, we don't actually know the strength of the Light of Judgment, do we? We just kind of see it do indirect effects. Like it starts an earthquake, and it, uh, it destroys, uh, the structural integrity of a large house, and Sabine's able to hold it up for five minutes. Anyway, anyway, this, that's not the battle we're having. It's a battle we could have in the future. Let's keep hoping, okay? Let us uh, <laughs> pray to the God of Destruction that he shall smite this 27-year-old pretty boy. <laughs> what is it with 27? I don't... <laughs> Kefka, by the way, is 35. Did you know that? <laughs> Alright, anyway. Is that my shit of bridge supper?
So Virgil's just chilling. Nice. Oh, I can do that. Admittedly, I can't do that. And I don't really need to. Say, is good. But are you fast enough? Apparently not. See, I could do that any time I want, according to this idiot. Oh, he looks like a Saint Seiya character when he does that. The golden armor and everything. <laughs> 